If you watched our last video where we spent Christmas Eve on Madeira Beach, you might have noticed that we mentioned that I'd be flying home. I flew out Christmas Eve from St. Petersburg, Florida to Des Moines, Iowa. And today I wanted to share my flight experience during a pandemic with you. It is a little bit different. That was the first time I had flown since the pandemic started. And I wanted to share it for anyone who might be curious. I know I was curious. Um, I know also that every flight can be a little bit different because I don't know that it's quite so much the airline as it is who is on your flight. Um, although I have heard different things about different airlines as well. So anyways, this will be my experience. Make sure you stick around to the end because I have kind of a funny story that happened at the very end of my trip um, that you may also find to be entertaining. I did fly Allegiant Airlines. So Allegiant Airlines is more of a budget airline. I fly with them frequently because they have a direct route from St. Petersburg to Des Moines, Iowa, and no other airline has anything that's convenient, honestly. So every other airline includes um, delay, not delays, um, layovers and things like that, which makes the travel day typically around eight hours by the time we drive. The other thing is that the Allegiant Airport is located in the Clearwater area, which is much, much closer than Tampa. So when you figure driving to Tampa and then having a layover, and then also my family lives an hour and a half from the airport in Des Moines, so that's just a lot, and Allegiant makes all of that much easier. So I think it could be worth noting that a lot of people complain about Allegiant. I've heard a lot of complaints and I personally haven't had very many issues with Allegiant, especially for the price. And I think that a lot of those complaints come from um, just not knowing what to expect. So Allegiant is a budget airline and so that means that a lot of things are not automatically included with the purchase of your airline ticket. So if you are a Southwest fan, you're going to be paying to check your baggage. And not only that, you're going to be paying even if you want to put luggage in the overhead bin. So the only thing that is included with your ticket is something to go that would fit underneath the seat in front of you. So that's just one example of how it's a budget airline and how a lot of people can go into situations similar to that just not knowing what to expect and i can see where that would be really disappointing if you weren't expecting it um so do your research of course um i think that's the biggest thing um you're gonna pay to switch your seats but anyways i've had good experiences with allegiant though so far so this is kind of funny as well we got to the airport about an hour and a half early which is actually extremely early because like i mentioned this airport is actually in clearwater so it's tiny i think there's like two or three airlines that fly out of the clearwater airport it's allegiant and like a couple of other small airlines so um, uh, an hour and a half early is extremely early. And when I got out of TSA, um, when I got through security, they were actually already calling my name to board the flight. What had happened is that they started boarding a little bit early and you're allowed to leave early as long as everyone is on the flight. So um, they were already calling my name even though I was there in more than enough time. So that was kind of funny. I was the last person on the plane. That never happens. I'm always super early. I'm always so paranoid about getting through the airports, even though I fly all the time and I should be used to it by now. But um, so I don't have quite as much footage from um, St. Petersburg to Des Moines as I have from Des Moines to St. Petersburg, but I do have some. Um, and I just wanted to share that in case you were wondering why. I also think it's worth noting I flew out on Christmas Eve, so our flight was not very full. Not many people want to leave warm and sunny Florida for freezing cold Iowa at 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and so I was expecting that flight to be pretty empty, and it was. Hello from the Des Moines, Iowa airport. I'm going to take you through what the airports look like right now with COVID, um, a little bit about what to expect and that sort of thing. 
It's going to be a little mishmash between my flight to Des Moines and my flight home. So I'm getting ready to fly home to Florida from Des Moines now. And I just didn't film a ton, a ton of footage on the way here. So I'm gonna kind of combine the two together. I'm here three hours early because they just delayed our flight for our snow. So I have all the time in the world to show you around, <laughs> show you what to expect and that sort of thing. So the first thing that I did to just kind of stay as safe as possible was I booked a direct flight. So there are no layovers or anything like that. On the way here, I left on Christmas Eve and I had the whole road to myself and um, there was like someone next to me, but it was a very not full flight. Very, very happy with how it was handled. Everyone wore their masks the whole flight. Um, when we did get to baggage claim, I will say a ton of people just like ripped them off immediately, but um, it was really easy to stay away from them. It was really easy to distance from them. So I was very pleasantly surprised with that whole thing. I did check a bag, even though I was only home for four days because my mom always sends me home with stuff. So I am waiting currently to check it. Um, Allegiance um, gate isn't even open to check bags yet. There's a line of people waiting. So I'm waiting over here so I can talk to you and um, all of that. But I'll flip it around and show you how not busy this airport is. It is a smaller airport um, being in Des Moines, Iowa, but it's not ever this slow, so, but I'll show you. Down there where everyone is lined up is the Allegiant gate where I'm kind of waiting for them to open so I can check my bag. But like I said, I'm three hours early. I'm two hours early for, the, for my normal flight time um, because we weren't sure what the roads were gonna be like. Um, my mom lives an hour and a half from the airport and we knew it was icy and snowing. So we got here really early and now my flight is delayed. So we're here extra, extra early. Also was going to be a nice wife, bring my husband home Casey's Pizza. But now that my flight's delayed, I'm not sure it's going to make it. Casey's Pizza, if you know, you know. Side note, you might've noticed a whole bunch of books in my <laughs> carry-on. And that's because along with Allegiant being a um, budget airline, their weight limit for checked bags is only 40 pounds. Most airlines it's 50. And I brought my wedding dress back with me this time, which is like huge and so heavy. <laughs> and so I needed to um, make weight. So that's why my carry-on is stocked with books. <laughs> that's because when my mom had done with hers, she gave them to me to read. So I was bringing them back with me. I wasn't, I'm not reading all of those books. And this whole video is on flying during a pandemic and it is impossible to talk about flying during a pandemic without bringing up masks. So if you have COVID fatigue, which I think every single one of us has at this point, we've been doing this for close to a year already. And, um, I think it's normal to just not want to hear about it anymore. So if you're sick of hearing about masks, if you don't want to hear about COVID, um, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you switch to a different video. Um, I hope you stay and I hope you come back, but I completely understand being so sick of hearing about COVID. So um, the next um, couple of minutes is going to be about how to stay safer when you are flying if that's something that you're interested in. And I just wanna make it noted that I'm not a medical professional. I did, you know, my own research. I listened to people close to me who I trust and value as well. Um, and in fact, when I was going back and listening, I feel like I kind of sound like, well, someone I know said someone they know said, <laughs> you know what, we all have those Facebook friends. Um, so, that's what works for me. The person that I listen to is well-educated and has done research and so I trusted it. Um, but please do your own research. This is just kind of what works for me. So I'll be sharing that next. More potential advice to stay as safe as possible if you're interested. I had texted my cousin before we went to ask him what his opinions were because he's done more research than anyone I know and he just flew a couple of weeks ago. He recommends flying direct. Um, he also recommended N65 masks and a face shield. I did buy both of those, but I ended up not wearing it because of how not busy our flight was. And I kind of feel like if I were to wear that and someone sitting next to me didn't believe in mask wearing, that they would take their mask off more often just to kind of mess with me. I don't know if that's logical or not but I'm wearing this and I do have them in my suitcase in my like carry-on in case I change my mind, but 
I felt very safe. So I'm just gonna stay with this. The, the airplane recycles all of the air in the cabin every two to three minutes. So that's good. Um, so yeah. I do apologize for the kind of poor quality here. I'm still getting used to filming in public. This is not me going through TSA, but it's the line to TSA. This was for my flight from St. Petersburg, Florida to Des Moines, and it was on Christmas Eve, and so it wasn't super busy. It was like a 2 p.m. flight or so, and not that many people want to be flying to Iowa from somewhere warm on Christmas Eve at 2 o'clock. So again, it was not a very busy flight. Um, it was There were tons of open seats, and that's also probably why that line to get through TSA was so short. Earlier, I mentioned that my flight from St. Petersburg to Iowa was pretty empty and likely because it was Christmas Eve, of course, and my flight coming back was full. I don't think that there were any seats. I had heard them say that and I didn't see any, so I think it's safe to assume that there were no open seats. And I was really expecting that. I flew back to Clearwater on, um, I think it was the 27th. So it was the first flight out of Iowa after Christmas and I knew that everyone was going to be wanting to go on vacation. So I was definitely expecting that and that was something that made me just a little bit nervous. Um, I didn't have as good of experience on the way home. Um, so again, I'm not trying to be political. Um, I'm, this is just my experience. As we were waiting in the gate area, the um do you call them the gate attendants it was like where you go to get on your plane the people that like call you up by row um the this lady had to ask a couple of groups of people to put their masks on three times the same person had to ask the same people three times um and that was kind of frustrating to see and then um, on the flight, the person behind me, I wasn't like looking behind me. So I don't, it's possible that I just happened to look at him every time he wasn't wearing a mask, but him and his son who looked to be about 10 to 12 years old, didn't wear a mask the whole time that I saw. And um, they also kept sneezing. And um, like the two women next to me got like sneezed on, like felt like, so they were never asked to put it on. Um, and I don't think that they wore it for the whole flight. So this will depend on your opinion, but it seems like it wasn't very well enforced to wear masks because the same people had to be asked so many times. And then the people on the flight who were not wearing a mask, which were different people, were never asked to put a mask on even when they were sneezing. So that was just my experience. Um, it might depend on the flight attendant, um, but it, I, I believe that it starts with the airline and it definitely was not enforced in my experience. Okay, I hope I haven't sounded negative about Allegiant because they truly have been, uh, I've had great experiences with them genuinely. I just want you to know what to expect so that you can have a smooth flight. I think most people who have um, written Allegiant off have been because they didn't know what to expect coming in, which created kind of a domino effect of, you know, stress after stress. So. Um, but the one thing that has happened to me with Allegiant is it seems like I get a lot of delays with Allegiant and um, that was no exception on this trip. So we were delayed, as you heard me mention earlier, and when we landed in Florida, um, so it was a later flight, I think that we originally were supposed to land at 9.30 p.m. and we didn't end up landing until around 10.30 p.m which for me was fine. We live close to the airport, no big deal. Um, not a big deal at all. I had the next day off because I don't work Mondays, um, but all everyone else in my plane is here for vacation. And so they're antsy and they're excited and they're ready to get going and we've already been delayed. So we get to the baggage claim and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're chatting and whatever and our bags are not, are not coming. And again, tiny airport, 
there was us and one other flight and that's it. And that's probably the only flights they had that night because it's a small airport. So again, we're waiting and 45 minutes goes by and we're like, did they forget about us? Like, this is weird. So long story short, yes, they like literally forgot about us. We were sitting there and you know, the computers above the baggage claims that show you um, which flights will be at each baggage claim. They all got wiped. So like it had said Des Moines for our baggage claim and it just got wiped. So it just said nothing along with all of the other baggage claims they had previous um, cities on them. Also the other flight that was there had landed after us and they had all gotten their bags. So we're kind of confused and a lot of people were pretty irritated i mean we're i've never waited 45 minutes for my bags before ever and um so the baggage like guy comes in from outside and you can tell that he was like expecting the baggage claim area to be completely empty and he saw this whole flight waiting there and his face just like went pale and he was just like <laughs> like you could see even through his mask he he was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And so that was kind of funny. Um, wasn't really funny to everyone else. They, they were not super amused. <laughs> but this is like when you're from Iowa, so like the whole plane pretty much is people from Iowa because you don't, why else would you go to Iowa? Um, like we have this saying that we're like Iowa nice. And sometimes that means that we don't necessarily speak up for ourselves like we're not great at being assertive we're really great at being passive aggressive so like complaining amongst ourselves but like we're not always great at being assertive at least that's my experience so it's kind of funny that that's how the trip ended but got our bags got home um almost two hours later than expected because they forgot our bags so by the time we got our bags we it took about i think it took an hour and 10 minutes to get our bags um, from like, that's how long we were sitting in the baggage claim. And then we were an hour delayed. But um, anyways, that was my experience with Allegiant. So feedback on the masks. I can't really give feedback without sharing my opinion. I'm sure that through the video, you kind of got an idea of what my opinion is. Um, but I, my goal is not to share my opinion. My goal is just to kind of take you with me so that you can know what to expect and so that you can feel prepared. Um, I feel like, I will share this, I feel like Allegiant could have done a better job. Um, but I also know that not everyone feels the way that I feel. And so um, you may feel differently than me and that's okay. I knew what I was signing up for. I knew the risks. I knew, you know, that this could happen. And, um, and, and it did. So I was just thankful that the two women sitting next to me on the flight home wore their masks the whole time. Um, so I was very, very thankful for that. And I would fly again. I've gotten a lot of very, very positive feedback about Delta and how they are handling masks. Um, they are handling the masks with like the empty, the middle seat empty. They are highly enforcing masks. And so maybe that's something that you love and maybe it's something that you wish they wouldn't do. And um, that can help you kind of make your decision. But I think if I do need to fly anytime in the future, it will probably be with Delta based on the feedback that I've gotten from other flyers. So happy flying and thank you for being here. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. We have lots of adventures coming and I can't wait to take you along.